Good morning, everybody. Can you go open the fridge? Tug. Good girl. Good girl. Pudding. Almost, bring. Almost, bring. Yes. It has my sofa in it, and a little pocket where she gets. You good girl. Sit. Sit in. Good platz. Good. Okay, we are back. Good morning. It is. I had the. I just had the date in my head too. It is Sunday, January twenty first. What's gonna happen in a year? Hey everybody, my name is Anna. Welcome to my channel. Um, if you're new here, I have been living with tick-borne infections. Yeah, the, the not so nice little critters that are everywhere. I've been living with tick-borne infections for my whole adult life. Um, I was bitten by two ticks when I was 17. I'm 43 now. Gives you a good idea. My, my entire adult life has been spent going doctor to doctor, trying to figure out what was going wrong, trying to chase after multiple um, etiologies of illness, and then trying to stabilize me. Part of that journey was to get a service dog. And the German Shepherd that you see in some of my videos. I have a YouTuber, I, I post longer videos. It's under Borrelia etc. Everywhere, like on Borrelia etc. dot com, Borrelia etc. on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, it, it, everywhere. It, it made it easy. So, one thing I wanted to talk about was um, what's been going on lately this past year I have been chasing after endocrinology I had a um, a referral that took over a year for me to get in but when I finally did get in it was worth the wait I, I do have to say um, we talked about the thyroid I said this is the first thing I want to stabilized because I know it can affect so many other things. So I found out that my thyroid was underactive when I was 21. It was just, it happened to be among a, a gamut of tests that my doctor at the time ran. And along with uh, my like estrogen, progesterone and all that, they were low. I was in a menopausal range at freaking 21. Um, but my, my thyroid wasn't working, so I'd been supplementing it. That's what my doctors knew to do. I never went to an endocrinologist before this last year. So I had always been treating it by accepting what the doctor said, and the, the doctor said, okay, you're low on both T3 and T4. So tiny thyroid lesson please don't bring this to like your teacher and expect a good grade because this is a very simplified view you have your thyroid by the pituitary right okay so you your body sends tsh thyroid stimulating hormone to the thyroid that starts to make t4 the t4 gets converted into t3 don't ask me who named these things. I don't know. 
could have been a little more exciting. But the T3 is the active part that goes around your body doing all the things that thyroid does. The automatic stuff. Your heart rate. Your temperature control. Your breathing. So much, all the things you don't have to think about in order to live. So, um, the doctor, the endocrinologist was like, okay, number one, I don't like to treat thyroid by just supplementing both hormones, which is what I've been doing under doctor's orders for over a decade, um, close to two, actually. And he was like, okay, what I want to do is get your body to work for itself the way it should be working. I want to be giving your body as least medi uh, the least amount of medication as possible. And I was like, awesome. I, I'm, I'm with you there. And I'm, I'm willing to take your lead here. And so he asked me what I have been on in the past. I have been on both synthetic, uh, like levothyrox, uh, leothyronine, so that's the synthetic T3, T4, or well, I should say other way around. Levothyrox is T4, leothyronine is T3. I've also been on desiccated hormones. I have been on armor thyroid and nature thyroid. Now, all the time of taking these, my numbers were never quite right. It was adjustment after adjustment after adjustment. Every time we did a blood test, something was off. We would have to back off on like T4 or increase the T4, but keep the T3 the same. Yeah, you know, it was it was a very strange um, experience for the past couple decades. And so, endocrinologist says we're going to start over. We are going to start with a simple dose of T4. That's it. Because your body should be doing the rest itself. Let's see if it will. And so he switched me. Um, and after hearing the, the reason that I went to nature thyroid and armor, the desiccated uh, hormones, is because I was having really strange symptoms along with the thyroid pills. Like my pain would get worse. I'm, I'm in chronic pain. I don't want to be taking more... Uh, narcotics or any or muscle relaxant I would rather try to fix what's going on so I went to the nature thyroid and it helped my it, my joints weren't as uh, inflamed my stomach wasn't as um, upset and it seemed like a good thing I wasn't as tired which I was like okay maybe that's the thyroid working, who knows, but, um, it wasn't, my numbers were always off, so he goes, the doctor says, I want to try you on something called tyrosint, now, that is this tiny little pill, and let me tell you, I can, I can swallow this with nothing else, uh, if I have enough saliva, um, hey, okay, so one thing I forgot to complete here was in talking about the tyrosint, I know it's going to come back backwards, but T-I-R-O-S-I-N-T, um, the thing about that is that it is T4 only with no fillers. There are four ingredients. Like you can look up tyrosint.com to um, read more about it. There are fillers in tablets, sugar, wheat, talc, talcum powder. Um, there's there are a lot of fillers that go into making a liquid medication into a solid pill tablet. That is what the doctor was like. I wonder if you're reacting to the fillers in the tablet instead of making use of the medication. The more we're asking your gut to do, um, the worse 
your uh, your outcome is. So let's ask your gut to do is the least amount of possible. The tyrosine is it's levothyroxine sodium pills. Um, I shouldn't say pills, gel capsules. They are liquid. The only other ingredients are the, the gelatin and the, uh, the water to make the gel capsule around it so it can hold the medicine. I love gel capsules. Anytime I can get a capsule over a pill, I'll jump for that. It's much more friendly for the stomach. So that is why he suggested this particular medication. And once again, it is just T4, not T3 as well. So we get the body, we, we stock it up with T4. The body should be making its own T3 from that. And guess what? My test results came back in. Um, I did somewhere between like six and eight weeks after starting the medicine. We did my first round of blood tests. I was in the normal range for the first time in a long, long time. So this was exciting news. Usually in the morning I wake up, I'm nauseous, and it it is very hard, incredibly hard for me to um, just get going. Just It's incredibly hard for me to get the energy up to go and... Not only that, when I wake up, I'm, I'm usually nauseous, more often than not, and um, that is why every morning I take Zofran. The reason that it's in syringes here is because I have an IV line. I have a tunneled IV that is always accessed. I have had this in, not this particular line, but I have had an IV in since 2006. 17 years. Why? Because when I get really, really sick and I start throwing up irretractably, uncontrollably, then I need help. Um, usually I can't keep water down. So, so that is uh, a lactated ringer. It's a two liter bag and I will just open up and let that run to give me some hydration after the Zofran. That is a regular morning for me. Now I have been waiting and thankfully it is now a half an hour past the time that I have taken that tyrosine, and um, I, yay, can drink tea. I can start to, it's very hard for me to get up and go without tea. I am somebody who I was brought up on drinking tea, the first thing. If I hear my mother get up, my caregiver, I had to move back in with my parents at 22 or 3 years old, something like that, and my mother became my caregiver, my professional caregiver, and it got classes by the state, and if you didn't know, like, there are at least 40, I think, there's 42 states that provide something very much like the program that we have here you can get uh, reimbursed for caring for a family member, for a friend. If you did not, if you did not know that and you are stuck in a situation where you're like, I can't go to work because I need to take care of this person, please look into your, um, your state's Department of Social and Health Services sort of thing, your, your, your health board 
and ask them, do we have a caregiving program? Because it costs way less for the state to pay a caregiver to take care of you than to put you in a home, which is what would have to happen. So, if you're, if you're feeling stuck like that and you're worried about a family member, look it up. There are also a few states that have like some reimbursements. It's not exactly the same, we will pay you to be a professional caregiver, but um, it's something. And, you know, everybody needs some help. Especially when you have a chronic illness in the family, when you have a disability in the family, when you have <laughs> both, when you have um, multiple people dealing with medical issues. And let me tell you, it's a lot of times caregivers end up being people who are already ill and we know what it's like to need help. And so we are some of the first people to reach out and overextend ourselves, unfortunately. Uh, the next thing that goes in, Zofran. Now, Zofran is an antiemetic. It helps with nausea. It, um, it's also the first thing, like, you know, if, if I cannot get that tyrosine down, Zofran goes first. This morning, I had to spend a bunch of time getting everything ready. That took like half hour, <laughs> almost a half an hour. So from the time that I took the terrorism to the time that I sat down and started recording, I was almost done with my half an hour. Don't eat anything during this time. So after the Zofran, you flush with saline, or saline, as some people say, I think in the UK it was pronounced that way. My mom's family is from the UK. Her father from Scotland, her mother from England. They moved to Canada when my mother was young, but she actually, because her father was in the Royal Air Force, she got to grow up all over the world. Uh, while my aunts and uncle were in boarding school, um, my mother was actually with her parents. Number one, she was a preemie, and so she... Um, she needed to be with her mother and fed a lot as a baby. And I think that that fear of losing her made her parents kind of keep on, um, to, they kept her close. They did not send her off to boarding school. So she got a completely different experience growing up than my aunts and uncle did. She got to go to Singapore, live there in uh, Kuala Lumpur as well, Malaysia, um, oh, I think there was one other spot that I'm not remembering, Penang, I think Penang. Um, and so my mother has a, a world view which Thankfully, I was brought up with, there are lots of people in this world, there are lots of different people in this world, and um, even though I haven't been out of North America, I, I would love to go see the world. I don't know if it's possible, but... Uh, I know I was brought up with more of a, a we are we are servants of the world. We should be here taking care of the land, 
taking care of the people that we walk beside in this life and um, I can't believe how many elders I see get passed by not an offer of help when they are visibly having trouble. I mean, some elders don't want help. They want to do things themselves. And, you know, I understand that. I can do it myself, feeling. But there, there's a grace in the humility of letting go and, and accepting some help. So, I don't know, I remember. <laughs> it's... It can be hard. I mean, there are times my caregiver will ask me, can I do anything for you? And, okay, anything. Uh, hmm. My brain, immediately, that's, that's very, uh, that is a very wide question. And anything? No, I don't need anything. <laughs> now, I mean, there are times when if I do need something and I, I will ask straight out and my 68 year old mother will jump up and want to do things for me. And, you know, it, it puts me in a place of a little bit of awkwardness because I'm supposed to be serving her now, you know, it, that... I'm supposed to have all the energy in the world. I'm supposed to be able to do a whole lot of stuff and help take care of my parents. Unfortunately, life doesn't work out the way we think it should. And we just kind of have to go with what we are given. It's one of the... one of the most hard lessons in humility like the good kind of humility not we're, we're not talking about humiliation we're talking about being humble we're talking about you know accepting help being able to step back let somebody else come in assist it's extremely hard. We're all told we should be individual go-getters, and I'm I'm not that way. I'm not driven by money. I'm not driven by um, by things. I guess is the way to say it. Um, I am driven by wanting to help people. One of the major things I saw missing in the community I'm in was support groups. Support groups for whatever you're going through. Chronic illness, um, are you home alone most of the day? Are you uh, trying to take care of somebody? You know, Teaching self-care, teaching um, reminding people about boundaries, teaching them about self-love, self-care, taking some time out for yourself, and anything from a bath to a nap <laughs> can be self-care. Self-care can be so much. It can be coloring a picture. I mean, there there are times I completely dropped. My mind just went blank. I have no idea where I was going. <laughs> anyway, so this is a typical morning for me. Get up, take care of the dog, 
make sure I get my first medication in so that while I'm doing things, taking her out, making them a cup of tea, by the time hopefully that tea is done, I'll be able to drink it. If I can't take the medicine, I have to go right to the Zofran. I still, I do Zofran every morning and every evening because without it, the nausea becomes unbearable and never ending. Along with Lyme disease, Bartonella, Babesiosis, um, and a few other tick-borne infections, I have, you know, I have the hypothyroidism. I also have gastroparesis, meaning my digestion is sometimes slowed, sometimes stopped. I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, I have POTS. My dog actually can tell whether my heart is going too low, too high uh, in its rate. And she'll be able to tell when something is wrong with me before I can tell. So if she starts nudging the inside of my wrist, or if she starts kind of bumping my leg, I know it's time to sit down. So, medicine, tea, more medicine. <laughs>